Go for ATL here, uh, recording again to show off some of the new features in version 1.0 of the BioLock. Um, you might, if you didn't see the last video, you should check it out. I you know, go over the basics of what it is and what it would be used for, but that's a major enhancement in this version, so this video is going to be a bit more technical in the explanation. Uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and show you. I've added uh, when the peripheral is mounted, it adds this program uh, to shell programs. It's only there on computers that have it mounted. But, uh, it lets you do some of the stuff, some of the new things on it very easily. Um, right out of the box, when you just place one, it sends these events, which uh, give a unique key to identify the player and tell you what side. And I've added this since the last video, it tells you what side the, uh, the bio block is on, so if this computer had more than one, it could differentiate whether it was, you know, which side it was on. Um, and but I've also added, you can now program a quite a bit of information into the block itself um, through the uh, peripheral wrapper bio peripheral dot wrap. There's a. It can now learn to associate a name and an access level with a given uh, print value. One of the, with the given the strings. And there's bio. K one. I do that. K B. Do end. Jesus. Um. Okay. Yeah. You can learn. Which is, uh, you give it a, a username, you have to pass in the print you want it to learn, and then an access level, and it remembers that name. Teach it me real quick. No, oh, I don't have the print. I'll do that in a second. Um, or, and then forget, you pass just the name, and it will forget the one that it has previously learned. Um, get learned name returns a list of all the names that is currently learned. By default, there's a limit of 16 that can be taught to the device. Um, you can change that into config if you want, but the default, that's the default. Uh, get access level, you give it a name and it tells you the access level saved with that name. Um, get print, same thing, except you give it a name and it gives you the fingerprint for that name. And then uh, program and forget program, which are the interesting ones, which I'll get to in a bit. Um, first off, for learn, forget, and uh, you're getting the information. That's what this handy utility program I've made does. Uh, first parameter is always decide the, the lock is on that you want to work with. Bottom, in this case. And then uh, list, list what's learned. In this case, nothing. Learn, go for a ATL. Now the uh, like I said, in it, if you're calling the API, you have to pass, you have to uh, do a pull event and catch that print that it returns so that you can pass that back into learn. And this sort of provides a little easier way to do that. Go for ATL 5. I scan it, and it learned my print. And if I list now, see it learned me. Um, you can recall it again to change the level. Um, and then you can also call forget, which you call forget with just the name, and it will forget them. And then, uh, yeah, that's all that the BioLock program will do for you. So it, it it'll make it easier if you need to add one person if you're using the uh, BioLock that way. Um, but if you wanted to do more, if you know complicated things with a whole network of, you know, around your whole base of multiple locks and be able to add things globally. And it's not going to be a whole lot of help with that. Um, none of the new methods will. That's so you might be wondering what the new methods are for, and they're there to support that one that I mentioned a minute ago, program. And what program does is, you notice there's all this redstone dust around here. Um, the bio, bio lock can now 
be programmed to output a redstone signal in response to being scanned with various rules. Um, you have a minimum of three parameters to this. The first is which side of this block you want to activate, front, left, right, or back, or, or top or bottom, actually, are supported as well. Um, we'll do left. Next parameter is an access level, which is a minimum level to activate it. Mine's currently three, so let's go with that. Um, and the third parameter is how long in ticks you want it to activate for when scanned. Um, let's go ahead and we'll do right. We'll make this one five, so I won't shouldn't be able to activate the right one. And I scan, and the left one activates. The right one does not because I'm only level three. Um, now all of these programs run every time. So if one person meets, you know, if you have six locks, six programs on there, one for each side, and one person meets all six, then all six are going to activate. Um, uh, there's two more optional parameters on this. They default to false. They're both just booleans. I'll show you those now. Um, the first one is reverse output, which if I specify a true for that, the output will be reversed on uh, this side, which means when nothing's happening, it'll be on. And then when someone who meets, that I don't meet that, I should have made this three. Uh, when someone who meets that criteria activates it, it will turn off and then back on. See? And the the uh, other parameter, which on the front side, is to reverse the behavior. Okay, I'm just got to leave that true. It doesn't really matter. Uh, when it, per it reverses the access level, so instead of activating for a person this level or higher, it will activate for a person lower than this level. So, I set it to level three. Uh, I'll meet it and nothing's going to happen on the front. But if I set it to level 5, then it turns off cause I, because I don't meet the criteria. Um, and then, see if I... Uh, yeah. Uh, and again, all of this, just like the, you know, learning to associate dames with prints, could have been done just in the uh, in Lua programs, but the reason I implemented all this stuff is it might not have occurred to you yet, because all of this is being set into the block. Uh, this isn't an API. This is the actual peripheral object. So now that I've got it all programmed, and that's the behavior I want, I can take the computer away, and the bio lock will continue to do its thing as it pro was programmed to do. Um, all that data is saved, so you know you exit the world, reload, whatever still works. In fact, not only that, um, just like a computer, ooh, it remembers when you break it and carry it around. Uh, to show you in the inventory, oops, I'm in creative mode, so I just duplicated them just like you do computers. But you notice this one, these were the blank, or well, no, I don't have any blank ones, do I? These are biometric lock number one. See, the blank ones have no ID yet. Uh, and that's the one that I just programmed. Anyway, yeah, um, that's pretty much the new features on that.